Hello folks. Today I'm going to be doing a video showing how to use this Bauer 500 millimeter telephoto lens on your camera. How to get it connected, how to set up the camera, and how to get some images from it. I did a review of this lens previously, so if you want to see kind of what I thought of it overall and what I was able to get out of it, you can go check out that review. Uh, I won't go into all of that here, but a lot of people had questions about how to make this work with their camera, so I thought, well, I'll do a follow-up video and just kind of show basically how to get some images out of it. Now I'll be talking a little bit about aperture and shutter speed in this video. Um, if you don't know what those adjustments really do for your image, I mean, you know kind of they're related to the exposure and then how much light you're getting in the image, but you don't know exactly what they do or how to set those. Uh, I do have some separate videos where there's lots of videos around uh, that explain the different settings, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO so that you can kind of get a feel for what those adjustments are going to do and how they're going to affect your images. So if you want to check those out, I do have some videos that explain that uh, if, you, if you don't already know. Uh, for starters, you got to get it connected to your camera. I got the version with the Nikon F mount connection on it because I have Nikon digital SLRs. Uh, you can also get it with an included connection for Canon and possibly some others. You can also get it without this adapter. Uh, this is what they call a T adapter or a T mount, and this actually just threads onto the back of the lens. Uh, these lens are kind of a standard thread, and you can get these adapters. You can see this is a Vivitar brand T mount for Nikon, and this actually came with this lens. Uh, this instruction will pretty much cover all of the versions of this lens, uh, Bauer, Vivitar, um, uh, Opteca, I think. Uh, it falls under several different brands, uh, all the same lens and then it pretty much applies also to any manual lens that you're gonna put on your camera. So once you have the right adapter, it threads right onto the back of the lens. This actually has the mount for the camera and it will mount up to the camera just like any other lens. So once that's mounted up, it clicks into place and you're ready to go. That's all there is to physically getting it mounted on the camera. Uh, now let's go over some of the controls on the lens and how to uh, work that and then we'll talk about how to set up the camera. The controls on the lens are fairly simple. Uh, all you have is zoom and aperture control. Uh, the zoom, you basically just rotate this whole front part and there's a kind of a rubber knurled grip here so that you can rotate it. And it does have a scale printed on here. Um, you have 10 feet here and then it scrolls all the way up to uh, infinity. Um, so basically as simple as that, you just turn this to focus. What you have here is actually the aperture control for the camera. Now you have this, this uh, knob here that says O and C on it, that's open or close. So if you go all the way open, that's the maximum aperture. So the smallest number, the largest opening. And if you go towards close, you're actually closing the aperture down. Now the way this second knob here works is that right now I have it turned all the way one way and it says eight. And that's kind of where this is centered. So we're now at an F8 aperture. Now F8 is the maximum aperture for this lens. So that's all the way open. And with this knob set at eight, this knob cannot turn. It's actually locked at eight. Now, if I turn this knob to 11, now what I can do is I can adjust between eight and 11. So this knob will allow me to adjust between an eight and 11 aperture. And then the further I go on this knob, all the way up to 32, now this knob will turn the full distance and will allow me to adjust between eight and a 32 aperture. So this is basically just an adjustment stop. So the further up you have this set, the further it will allow you to close down the aperture. Uh, but this doesn't actually adjust the aperture, it just adjusts the stop point. So if you want this knob to only adjust between, you know, say eight and 16, you turn this to 16, and then now you'll have an adjustment between eight to 16 aperture. So not the most obvious thing to look when you first look at it, but once you know how it works, it's not too bad. Now, kind of one of the main things you need to know about connecting this lens to your camera is that this lens does not have any electronics in it. Uh, and what that means is not only is it gonna be a fully manual lens, but it does not talk to the camera in any way. Most modern lenses, when you connect them to the camera, the camera is gonna interface with the lens electronically, and it's going to allow it to adjust things automatically like the aperture, and the focus and sometimes even the shutter but it will also allow the lens to talk back to the camera to give feedback on things like exposure and white balance and stuff like that uh, depending on the lens and depending on the camera so what that means is when you have this lens connected to your camera it's essentially the same thing as not having a lens on your camera 
So most cameras will have to be set in fully manual mode to use this lens. And if you're set in any other settings, it's either going to give you a warning saying that there's no lens attached, or it's going to give you some other kind of a warning. And I'll show you on this D90 here, when I turn it on without a lens attached, you can see I have the f-stop indicator is flashing and I do not actually have my shutter speed listed and it will not allow me to adjust it. And right now I am in the full auto mode. And you'll see if I press the shutter release button, nothing at all happens. Um, it actually will not let you take a picture because it's looking for a lens and it's not getting it. It's expecting that feedback that it's going to be getting from the lens in order to properly adjust the settings in automatic mode since it's not getting it. Uh, I'm just getting blank readouts and it won't let me take a picture. On some cameras, you'll get a warning that says no lens attached. And that will hold true on all settings except full manual mode. So automatic, program, shutter priority, aperture priority, and all of the different scene modes, uh, they're going to do the same thing. Just will not allow me to take a picture, flashing, F reading, and no shutter reading at all. But you'll see once I go into the full manual position, now I have my shutter reading here. It allows me to adjust it. Uh, the aperture setting here is still dashed lines because it doesn't know what it is. It doesn't have any control over it, but you'll see it does allow me to take a picture. Uh, so most cameras, you're going to have to be in manual mode for it to even let you take a picture with this lens attached. Some cameras do basically all of the metering in the camera and they don't really require a lens for metering. And so it will let you take pictures in some of these uh, programmable modes, but probably not in full auto. So that's something to be aware of too. In some, in some of the higher end cameras, some of the more kind of pro or prosumer kind of level cameras, you'll get some metering and some automatic control in some of the other settings, but most of the time you're just going to have to have it in full manual mode. Now that you have the lens attached to the camera, you have it set to manual mode, uh, you're ready to start taking pictures. Uh, you'll have manual focus and manual aperture control and then the shutter speed you'll still control with the camera. Uh, one thing to note with the aperture control, uh, being that this is an f8 maximum aperture, most of the shooting you'll do, you'll probably leave it at f8 uh, because that's already a fairly small aperture. If you have very bright light and you wanna decrease the shutter speed or something like that, it does at least allow you to close the aperture down somewhat. Um, but most of the time, f8 is gonna be okay. Uh, just something to keep in mind that you probably don't have to adjust this all that often to get the pictures you want to get, uh, but it does give you that option. And this lock mode is actually kind of nice because if you do just want to shoot at an F8 most of the time, you can have it locked at F8 and you're not going to bump this and have it suddenly turn your aperture way down and all of a sudden you're getting pitch dark images and you miss a shot. So once you go to take a picture, manual focus, take a shot, and then adjust from there based on the exposure level you're looking for. Uh, if you find that all of your images are coming out totally dark or just totally white, you're going to want to adjust the shutter speed and aperture as needed. Uh, if you have a totally dark image, just make sure that you have this uh, aperture opened all the way up, all the way at 8, and then just start slowing your shutter speed down and take more pictures and see if that helps, or try turning up the ISO of the camera uh, to try and get more light and try and uh, bring that image brightness up. Another thing to note on this camera, it doesn't limit me from taking pictures. Uh, even though I have this set to autofocus with a manual focus lens attached, uh, but on some cameras it does. So that's another thing that you're going to have to take a look at, particularly if when you press the shutter release button, nothing happens. Uh, on some cameras, if you have it in autofocus mode, the camera is looking for autofocus when you half press the shutter. And if nothing happens and it can't lock itself into focus, it actually won't let the shutter release. So that's another thing to keep in mind. If it, if you're having an issue with the shutter not releasing, uh, just make sure you have this in manual focus mode or whatever your camera setting is. This one's an actual physical switch on the side here. Uh, some of them might be uh, software setting, uh, but just another thing to keep in mind. There are some cameras out there that if they're in auto focus mode and it doesn't have any way of locking in that focus itself, uh, it will not let you take a picture. Uh, so that's just another thing to keep in mind to make sure you have it set to manual focus mode if you're having trouble. Now for things like white balance and your picture control settings in terms of uh, color, sharpness, contrast, all that kind of thing, 
Uh, that's all set up in the camera and that doesn't change with the manual lens on there. Uh, the camera should still control all of that. Uh, all of those settings should be the same. But uh, the main thing you're going to have to deal with is the manual focus, the aperture control, and then you'll have to manually adjust the shutter as well to get the exposure that you want. Now, just a few general tips. With a 500 millimeter focal length, uh, you are going to get pretty shaky images. It's going to be a lot harder to hold the camera really stable and get a clear image than it is with uh, a really low focal length, like something like a 50 or even 100 millimeter. And this lens obviously does not have any vibration reduction built in. So if your camera body does not have any vibration reduction built in, uh, I'm going to highly recommend you use this lens on a tripod. Uh, it does have a tripod mount on the bottom so that you can thread a tripod mount onto it. And that is standard quarter 20 threads, just like what you have on the camera. So this does allow you to connect the lens to a tripod. Um, this lens is fairly lightweight, so it's not a ton of weight hanging off the camera like a lot of the longer focal length lenses are. Uh, but still, it's nice that they give you a tripod shoe here so that you can basically have the camera hanging on the lens mount instead of having the lens hang on the lens mount of the camera. Just a little tip there. Nice to use a tripod and use it with this mount if you're going to. So that's pretty much it. Not a whole lot to know, but there's definitely a few details that you have to be aware of. Otherwise, your camera is not going to let you take a picture. But that's the basic setup and operation. Hopefully I didn't miss anything, but if you have any questions or if there's something you think I missed, go ahead and post it up down below, ask the questions in the comments, and I will answer if I can. Hopefully this will get some people started with this lens and clear up some questions people may have about this lens and let them know how to get it working on their camera. As always, thank you for watching. Take care.